Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another loud update from the modular model railway. This episode is proudly sponsored, as always, by D-Rails Model Shop, and this time also by Model Railway Scenes, a brand new sponsor for the channel, and one that has made a big difference to the layout, as you'll see a little bit later on. Speaking of the layout, with the yard module pretty much complete now, work has sort of shifted over to the station module, and in the previous episode I successfully managed to create a car park and a little grassy area behind the station too. So today the plan is to try and finish off the majority of the scenery on this module. It's a tall order, but I think it should be possible. So this is where I currently am with the layout. As I said in the previous episode, the scenery towards the back of this module was completed, but now it's time to focus on the front half. That's mostly going to involve the construction of an embankment so that the land rises up to the platform in a realistic way. First though, you can see this little waiting room I have on platform 2. It's going to need a bit more space, so I've decided to extend part of the platform backwards slightly just to give it more room as well as creating a little grassy area beside it. Like the platform structure, I've done this with four layers of foam boards stuck together and super glue is added to the bottom so that it can be fixed in position. You might also notice there's a little tube creating a hole through the foam board. That goes all the way through the baseboard too so that the lights in the building can be wired in. With the platform extension in place, I can now start adding foam board formers to create the embankment. Again, these are being super glued in place. You can see I've given all these pieces a general downward slope as I want the land to fall away from the platform naturally towards the edge of the baseboard. This will also match up with the landscape on the yard module too. I'm making sure to angle the ones at corners though just so that the slope isn't too straight or uniform. The general idea here is that the land has been built up around the platform and its subsequent extension. But while the embankment is man-made, it's been here for a long, long time, so it's definitely bedded in by now. Now, at the far end of the module, I want the land to gradually rise up to the height of the end plate. First, I'll use some foam board laid flat to raise up the base height. Then I'll add some formers up against the inside of the end plate. Of course, these ones are much longer than the ones for the embankment, which gives it a smoother, more gradual rise. With all the formers in place, I can then start adding mod rock over the top to create the initial surface. Now, obviously, while doing this, I realized that the mod rock really sags down quite a lot with the weight of the water, and you can see the ridges created by the formers underneath. Honestly, if I was doing this again, I would either have more formers closer together to support the plaster bandage better, or I'd do what I've done in other places on the layout, which would be to put down a layer of paper mache first. Paper mache doesn't sag because it's much lighter, and then you can add plaster bandage over the top of that, which will give you a rock solid surface to work on. You can see the general shape of the embankment now though, and we can start to imagine what this will look like once we get some scenery on here. I've also added some filler just to help smooth out the surface in some areas, and it's also disguised that sagging a bit too. Additionally, I've cut some grooves along part of the surface where I want to place a section of wall across the front of the module, and this will give it a flatter path to run along. Next up, the platform extension needs a coat of grey paint to match the existing surface. This does look slightly dark at the moment, but this is exactly the same paint I used previously when I made the platforms, so once it dries they should be fairly similar. Although it's feasible that this area could have been added to the station at a later date, I'd rather it all blended together nicely without a clear edge. While that dries, the rest of the embankment is then given a coat of brown acrylic paint. 
This not only tones down the bright white of the plaster surface, but it also acts as a general dirt color for underneath the main scenics. Now, some people like to also add a full covering of dirt scatter over the top of this too. To be honest, I've never seen much point as it's almost always completely covered up by the grass, unless of course you're deliberately going for a thinner covering of grass. But generally, you just don't want to see the white shining through as that will be much more noticeable. Luckily, the platform surface has dried now, and like I said, the colour matches the existing surface pretty well. The only thing left to do here is add a dirty black wash over the area so that it doesn't look too pristine. I'm adding this onto the platform in front of the new area too, just to help blend the two sections together. Once the wash is on there, I then use a tissue to dab away as much excess as I want. This creates some nice varied shades on the surface, which helps break it up, as well as giving the impression that it's been here for a while. Now at this point, I'm sure you all know I'm a big fan of D-Rails Model Shop, who have very kindly sponsored this series. Whether you're a complete beginner or a more experienced modeler, they're definitely a great model railway retailer to have on your radar. I'd say it's definitely worth signing up to their newsletter too, as they're really on the ball with new releases. Uh, I have to admit, I've occasionally been caught out where something I want is out of stock everywhere, and then I'll get a message from D-Rail saying that they've got a few left, so yeah, that's really cool. Of course, that coupled with their free postage for any orders over £20 is amazing too, and it's just such a nice experience to buy from them. It, it feels much more personal rather than going through one of the huge online retailers. So yeah, definitely worth checking them out at derails.co.uk. And now, with all the groundwork done, I think it's time to add some scenics to this module. Earlier on, I was talking about adding dirt scatters to the surface as a base layer, and while I think it's a bit of a waste of time over an entire layout, it can work really well in selected areas towards the edge of a grassy area. I'm planning to have the grass thin out as it gets to the back of the platform, and so I'm going to create a dirt verge along the boundary. You can see I've put down a thin strip of PVA glue, and this can then just be covered in dirt. As I've said in the last few episodes, this is dirt from the garden which has been fully dried out. You then do need to sieve it down to almost dust so that you only get the smallest particles. Of course, this is a lot of work, so you could just buy some dirt scatter if you like. Although, personally, I find that using actual dirt does have a more realistic look, as you would expect. Now, I mentioned earlier on that I wanted to have a little grassy picnic area on the platform here, and so obviously this needs to have a grassy surface. As I'll be keeping the grass fairly short here though, I'll add a covering of dirt all over this area too as a base layer. Like I said, I'm not sure it'll actually show through that much, but if anything, it'll at least cover up the platform surface underneath. Another thing I'm trying out this time is some modeling mud from WWS. Now this is a bit of an experiment just to have a go at creating a slightly different texture for some extra detail. You can see that it's really easy to add with an old paintbrush and I definitely like the look of this as it has that glossy look that mud often has. Depending on how it looks when dry though, it could actually be a good alternative to using the dirt scatter entirely as it's certainly a lot quicker to use. Now, when I was doing the siding scenery, you may remember that I added a long section of dry stone walling along the front of the entire module. At the moment, that comes to a very abrupt stop where it joins onto the station module, but the plan here is to continue this along the entire embankment. I'm using the same stone walling that I've used previously, and because it's made from foam, it shapes to the contours of the land quite nicely. That said, the little cutouts I made earlier are definitely very helpful here to create a smooth pathway for the wall so it's not having to go over every single bump and ridge. Now, as much as I like this walling, and I've used quite a lot of it at this point, unfortunately the quality really seems to have gone downhill recently. 
I've had packs where several sections were just completely unusable because the pattern was a real mess, and in fact even these sections I'm using now have similar issues that I'm kind of hiding by having them face away from the viewing side. It's a real shame because I used to really like this product, but it's not exactly cheap, and sadly I don't think I'll be buying any more of it, so I am going to have to come up with another solution for the rest of the layout. Now at the far end of the module, I've added an extra section here as if this is the corner of a field that extends beyond the foreground. There is a large gap in the wall here though, which I'm now going to fill with a gate. This gate also lines up with some of that mud I put down earlier too, which makes sense since the ground would be a bit more well trodden here. Now it's time to bring the scenery to life by adding the first layer of static grass. For the base layer I like to use 2mm fibres, and for the little picnic area on the platform I'm going to use a blend of three different colours to create a more dried out look. I'll start with that area first by adding a layer of PVA glue where I want the grass. The blended 2mm grass is then added over the top of this. And it doesn't matter if it spills outside the intended area, as everything will be getting a 2mm base layer anyway. I can then continue working my way along the rest of the embankment. For this I'm just using my standard technique which starts off by using 2mm summer grass for the base layer, and this will just keep things consistent with the rest of the scenery on the layout. As I work my way along the module, I'm being careful when I put the glue down around the walling as I don't want any of the grass to stick to this. Obviously using a bigger brush will allow you to work quicker, but a smaller brush is just much better when you need to get into tighter areas, or if you just need more control over exactly where the glue goes. And with more of the module now covered in green stuff, the scenery is really starting to come together. Now, if you're excited to see what I've got planned for the layout and you just can't wait for the next episode, I've got some great news. You can watch the next video right now by becoming a channel member and you'll be ahead of everyone else. Not only that, but I also post updates from the layout while I'm working on it, and there are special videos that are exclusively for members too. I've said this plenty of times in the past, but it's less than the cost of a coffee to join, and you get loads of benefits with it. Uh, you can check them all out by clicking the join button below this video if you're on a desktop. That'll take you to a little area where you can see everything you get on all the different tiers before signing up. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you over in the members area really soon. The base layer has completely dried out now, and you can see that the picnic area has more of that brownish tint that I was going for. As this is the only layer this area will be getting, I can remove the masking tape from around the outside to reveal a nice clean edge. The rest of the grass though will be getting a second layer, this time of 4mm fibres. Layering spray is added over the existing grass, and you can see I'm once again being careful not to get any on the wall. Four millimeter spring grass is then added over the top fairly quickly. The longer fibers create a slightly more wild looking effect, just like a field that hasn't been mowed. Gradually I work my way along the module in small sections, again being careful that the spray doesn't get onto the picnic area so that there's a clear distinction between the two.
layering spray actually dries fairly quickly, so with all the 4mm grass now down, I can pretty much immediately move on to adding some even longer 6mm grass. As I've mentioned before, I like to add patches of longer grass just for some extra variation, usually starting off with some dead or patchy grass. This gives the impression that the grass has dried out in the sun over the course of a hot summer, and so generally I try to add this in more open areas where the sun would hit it for longer. In comparison, I also add smaller patches of autumn grass too. Because this is a darker, more lush green, I tend to add this in areas of slight shade as a contrast to the dead grass. So the grass is looking great, but there's a bit too much of a hard line along the dirt verge. To blend this in, I'll add random dots of PVA glue along this strip so that I can create a thinner, more patchy grass layer towards the edge of the boundary. And this is pretty much exactly the same technique I used around the sidings a few episodes ago. The 4mm static grass is then added directly over the top of this. Not having a 2mm base layer underneath will make it appear thinner as you should be able to see right through to the dirt underneath. And obviously the grass won't stick anywhere there isn't glue either, which will create some open patches. With the excess grass all cleared up, it's time to add something else along the boundary, and that is more of the Midland style fencing that I used on the opposite platform. This time it was a much easier job, as I was able to just poke holes through the mod rock surface that correspond with the posts. The sections of fencing can then just be pushed down into the holes with a bit of PVA on the posts to hold them in position. A shorter section was added to match up to where the waiting room starts, and I'll probably use a matchstick or something here to just create an extra post on the end there. After the waiting room, the fencing is then continued along the back of the picnic area. And now that we have that fence in place, you can really start to see the difference between the well-kept lawn and the more wild grass of the embankment. Of course, when starting a new section, I use a little bit of PVA to hold the two together in the same alignment, and this gives it some added strength too. With all the fencing added, the joint along the bottom is blended in further by adding foliage along the entire length. As in previous episodes, I'm using a mixture of clump foliage and finely foliage from Woodland Scenics in a mixture of different colours to create a nice variation. The important thing with using the different colours is to think about how different plants would grow and spread in the wild. So although it can be random to a certain extent, you do want to group certain things together in a natural way if possible. It's not just the fence line I'm blending in here, the walling can also have some foliage added around it too.
Now, with the embankment pretty much done, you'd think that might be the end of the video, right? Wrong. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done around the station, and that's where Model Railway Scenes comes in. They have a great range of 3D printed items to cover all kinds of eras, and I'm really excited to try some out on the layout. I actually used some Model Railway Scenes products on my 009 layout Gova Tin to add some extra detail around the station. You can see here that the platform was a little bit bare until I added these, and I have to say I absolutely love their custom station signs. You literally just tell them on the website what name you want and then it turns up a few days later. It couldn't be easier and like I said I love the way they look. Uh, Model Railway Scenes have very kindly set up a discount code for you guys to get 25% off their 3D printed products. Just use the code TMRG2023, I'll put that down in the description too along with a link to their website. It's definitely worth checking them out and I'm really looking forward to trying some more of their products out right now on the modular Model Railway. So I've been very busy in the background painting up some of the 3D printed details Model Railway Scenes kindly sent me to use around the station. I'm really pleased with how all of these have turned out. We have some benches for use on the platforms, flower boxes which I've added some static grass to as a finishing touch, plus some modern looking bins which I also think would be a nice addition. I particularly like these two trolleys as well, which in themselves are really nice models, but I've added some extra details from Model Railway Scenes on top of them too, with the milk churns, and then also the suitcases as well. There's even a phone box too, which I think will look absolutely great beside the main station building. I think it's fair to say though that one of their most popular products is their custom station signs, like the ones I used on Govid Tin. I've had some more made up for the module layout, and so I guess it's time to reveal the name of the station, which is Pitley. So yeah, we finally have a name for the station, and the layout and the Heritage Railway as a whole is going to be known as Pitley Steam Railway. I actually did a video for members recently where I explained how I came up with the name, so it might be worth checking that out if you're interested for more info. And you can see I'm starting to add the other details around the station too. I'm just trying to find natural places for everything to go. For example, it makes sense that a bin would go in this little corner here. Like I said, the phone box should be near the main station building, and I love this position where it's sort of round the corner, but it's still visible enough to be seen. I'll add another running in board at the far end of the platform too, and I think having the flower box beneath these is a really nice touch. The bench can then go to the left of that, which will be a perfect viewing spot for the locos when they're standing in the station. And on the other side of this, I'll place the trolley with the milk churns on just for some extra station furniture. In the little open area beside the main building, I place some metal bins. I imagine these are more for staff use. But not to worry, because not far away is a normal litter bin. And then next to this, I'll put down the second trolley with all those cases on. My logic here is that these trolleys aren't left outdoors overnight, so they need to be fairly close to the double doors on the building so that they can be stored inside. This is of course just one platform, but I've also done the same on the opposite side too. The only major difference is the picnic area, where of course I put these wooden style picnic benches, which really brings this scene together. And of course I'll put yet another bin here too, beside the toilet block, which I've finally added onto the side of the waiting room. And with that, I'm pretty happy with how the station is now looking. As the 1F brings in its freight train, it's great to finally have scenery covering this entire module, which is a major step forward for the layout. Now that both the yard module and the station module are both almost complete, the layout is looking a lot more finished from a visual point of view. As ever, there is still a lot to do though. Some of that is visual things like adding some figures or extra detail around the station, but there are other jobs behind the scenes which need to be completed too. For example, I need to make some repairs to the wiring, mostly lights which have been accidentally disconnected at some point, 
but generally it all needs a good tidy up. And I have some exciting ideas for making the layout easier to operate at the exhibition too. That will all feature in a future episode, but like I'm always saying, if you want to be the first to see those new episodes, then make sure you become a member, as you not only get early access, but also updates from the layout while I'm working on it. The next video is available to watch right now though, and here's a look at what's coming up. I do some crowd control, the shed gets an upgrade, and further detail is added to the station.